Today's situations will challenge your identity. People will challenge your identity. Friends, family will challenge your identity. They will challenge your dreams. The Lord Jesus Christ hasn't even started ministry, but the enemy is taking him up because he wants to train the destiny that the Lord has, the destiny that has caused you and I today to call him King of Kings, the destiny that caused him to bleed on the cross. And now all the world and generations can call upon his name because he's now the King of Kings, the enemy who present to you. You have not even walked into ministry. You haven't even started showing your gift, but the enemy is showing up at the crossroad of your destiny because he wants to trade the good and perfect destiny and gifts. He wants you to trade your identity that God has placed upon your life. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today, for subscribing, for liking my videos, for commenting, for all your support. Thank you. If it's your first time, welcome to my channel. My name is Daphne and I'm very uh, excited to see you today on this channel. So welcome to Wisdom Wednesdays. We're back again and let's go straight into the Word of God. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 to 11 which says, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Then Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Glory to God. I just love the word of God because it is our food, it is our instruction, it is our light and our lamp in such a dark world and an age and a generation whereby things need to be revealed by the Spirit of God and this word is life to us. So here we see the Lord Jesus Christ is being tempted and what's really interesting about this is that the temptation doesn't necessarily happen during the fasting and during the prayer. I want you to understand that the times of temptation and compromise come at your weakest time, at your weakest season, at your weakest hour and your weakest day. The enemy does not fight in the spiritual realm because he has already been defeated. He has lost the victory. So he comes and fights with you in your mind, in your emotions, in the flesh, when you are in the flesh. This is when he comes because in your flesh, the Bible tells us that you are weak, but in your spirit, you are strong. So he finds seasons where you are weak, seasons where you are desperate, seasons when you are thirsty and hungry, seasons when you are in need of something. And he presents to you new ideas. He tries to present to you new things that have nothing to do with your identity and your destiny and where you are going in the next season. I don't know what season you are in today. Maybe you've lost certain things. You're in a time of need. You're in a time of want. You're in a time of weakness. You're in a time of hunger. The Bible tells us that after 40 days, after 40 nights of fasting and prayer, our Lord Jesus and Savior was hungry. He was now at his weakest time. A time when you are weak and you are in need of certain kind of food. You are in need of certain kind of nutrients. You are in need of certain kind of particles. In need of a certain kind of substance so that you can be strengthened once more. This is when the enemy comes. So he came and he's always been the same from generation to generation. His tricks are the same old tricks. Watch in your time of being weak. Watch in your time of being sick. Watch in your time of being hungry. Watch and be vigilant. For there's somebody that is waiting on the other side, on your crossroad of destiny. There's a spirit 
there's a thought there's a plan there's an idea there's a desire waiting for you to bow down to it pray that in those days of weakness pray that in your season of want that you can only fall down to the feet of the king of kings and not the feet of the prince of this world so the enemy comes and he begins to tempt him and the enemy here we are being described the facet of who is coming to tempt the facet of the person coming is called the tempter so he's revealing himself as the tempter when the Lord Jesus Christ is hungry and he says to him if you are the son of God if you're really anointed, if you really finish that degree in a time of recession, if you're really doctor so and so, if you're really talented, if, if, if you are really who you say you are, if you're really who your identity is showing, do this and do that. He was being tempted. If you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. If you are so beautiful, dress in a certain way to allure and to entice a man that you may become married. If you are really at the age where you need to be married, you see the temptations, they are very deceitful. The temptations of Satan, they are beguiling. The temptations of Satan, they are coming in a way to please a need. But the motivation behind that is demonic. The motivation behind pleasing your need today the motivation behind the ideas that you have, the plans that you have. They are pleasing. They are there to please a need. But what is the source behind the motivation? What is the source behind you turning those stones into bread, child of God? What is the source behind you turning that situation into a situation that can feed your generation to come, that can change your generation to come tomorrow? Maybe you have all these ideas that are coming up and those ideas and those things that you're about to do, they can change your life tomorrow. It's an opportunity that you feel I cannot miss. But that opportunity behind that mask, it's a temptation. It's a temptation to turn stones into bread. It's a temptation that is demonic. It's coming from the kingdom of darkness. It is not the will of the Father for you, child of God. So the Lord Jesus Christ recognizing that this source of turning the stones to become bread so that I can become filled so that I don't have to be hungry anymore. He says, wait a minute. He discerns that the source, the source is not of my father in heaven. And so he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You see, when you're fighting a warfare with Satan, you have to understand the kind of warfare you are in. The Lord Jesus Christ is not saying, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the seats of scorners, nor stands in the paths of sinners. This warfare is about turning stones into bread. This warfare is about feeding his need. This warfare is about bread. So he responds according to the warfare. You have to respond with the sword. And you have to be willing to cut the head at the right moment. Cut the feet at the right moment. Cut those hands at the right moment that you will not be influenced. Fight with precision. Fight with accuracy. Fight with wisdom. Don't fight with logic. So he fights with accuracy according to the warfare that he's facing. He fights with wisdom according to the need that is being presented to him, child of God. And, he's, and the enemy is saying, okay, 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 I see, I see he's got the word. I see that the word is inside of you. The enemy will see how far he can stretch you. How far can you go being single till you're 35? How far will you go? He will ask you a question. How long are you willing to walk this righteous road? How long are you willing to do things the right way as he did with Job? How long are you willing? To not curse God. Why don't you just curse God and die? How long are you willing to be so righteous? To be a holier than thou among us? Why are you always acting holier than thou? The enemy is testing the word inside of you. And so the temptation gets to another level. And the Bible is now presenting to us the true nature of Satan. And he comes now as the devil. No longer as the tempter. The devil took him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the table, set him high. You know, you could be there right now. You could be up there right now. Right now you're down here. If you do this and that, you'll be up there. If you just trade your soul, you could be up there. If you just go to that witch and that wizard 
and just give a little bit of coins and just do what they are saying to you if you just cut those chickens heads if you can just do these things that they're asking you to do whatever those things are you found yourself in a couch you're about to enter a couch because you want to sit on the pinnacle of the temple you want a great ministry you want a great business you want something that flourishes. You want a great marriage. Maybe you want kids. You've been trying so hard. And you're about to enter a cult. You're about to enter a place of control and manipulation. You're about to enter a place of wizardry because of your need, child of God. Be very careful that you do not go where they are saying you need to be going. Be very careful that you do not trade your sanity. Do not trade your peace. Do not trade the comforts that you cannot see right now. Do not trade your family because the spirit of death is going to come into your life. I'm speaking to somebody right now. If you go there, a spirit of death is going to come into your family. And one by one, they're going to kill all the children in your family. Be very careful that you do not go where they are saying you need to be going. Child of God, the enemy said to the Lord, the enemy took him up on the pinnacle, the highest point of the temple. The highest point of profit, the highest, the highest point of ministry, the highest point of your gift where it flourishes like never before, the highest point of your talent, the highest point of joy that should come in a marriage, the highest point of laughter. But little do you know that the good and perfect gifts, they don't come from Satan. They only come from the Father. The gifts and the things of God, they come with no sorrow, but the things of Satan, they come with sorrow. So he took him up on that pinnacle of the temple and he said to him, if you are the son of God again, he challenged his identity. Today's situations will challenge your identity. People will challenge your identity. Friends, family will challenge your identity. They will challenge your dreams. The Lord Jesus Christ hasn't even started ministry, but the enemy is taking him up because he wants to trade the destiny that the Lord has, the destiny that has caused you and I today to call him King of Kings, the destiny that caused him to bleed on the cross. And now all the world and generations can call upon his name because he's now the King of Kings, the enemy who present to you. You have not even walked into ministry. You haven't even started showing your gift, but the enemy is showing up at the crossroad of your destiny because he wants to trade the good and perfect destiny and gifts. He wants you to trade your identity that God has placed upon your life. He wants you to trade the wealth that you are destined to walk in that comes with no sorrow. He wants you to trade that with what he has for you, but what he has for you has worms inside. What he has for you comes with sorrow, child of God. Do not trade your destiny. You haven't even started walking in. You haven't even started walking in those dreams. You're sharing your dreams, but already they have come. They are presenting to you bowls of soup and lentil. They are presenting to you things that will steal and take your destiny away. The Lord hasn't even started ministry. And already the enemy is saying, if you are the son of God, commit suicide. Throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your feet against a stone. Do not abort the destiny that God has for you. Despite the winds, despite the storms, despite the climate, the social climate, despite the economic climate, the relationship climate. Yes, we are in a lockdown, but do not trade. The marriage that God has for you. You haven't even started dating, but do not trade the destiny that God has assigned for you. He says, throw yourself down. Throw yourself down because he wants to kill him. He wants him to tempt God. He wants to find a legal ground to accuse him. The enemy is looking for legal rights, legal ground to accuse you. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he knows the word. He knows which sword to draw out. He knows the length of the sword that is to come out now. And he said, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord, your God. You see, the only way to win warfare is to set our eyes above. Set your eyes on the things that are above. This is how you can win warfare. Simply by training yourself to set your eyes on the things that are above. So as you begin to set your eyes on the things that are above, your mindset begins to ascend to where your spirit dwells. Because the Bible tells us that we are seated with him in the heavenly realms in Christ. 
So you are seated in Christ on a throne above powers and principalities, but your mindset needs to ascend to those things that are above so that your logic, your wisdom, your way of thinking can catch up with your spirit and that you can put your body, your flesh under subjection. So the Lord puts his flesh under subjection and he says, do not tempt. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the enemy doesn't give up. That's the thing. He doesn't give up. He keeps coming with different strategies, different temptations. You find today, you know, you're fighting with this friend to, and everything is fine. You won that battle. Tomorrow it's another cousin. Tomorrow it's the auntie. Tomorrow it's that one. The enemy will not give up because he wants you to give up on your dream. He wants you to give up on the promise that God has given you in the secret place. He wants you to question your identity. He wants you to question who you are and what you've been assigned to do. Because when you are born, there's a record that is written about you and your destiny and who you shall become here on earth. And so he wants you to abort. He wants you to rewrite the handwriting that was written with blood concerning your life and your destiny. The handwriting, he wants to put another handwriting of requirement that is contrary to the will of God for your life. You see, there are books in heaven, but there are also books in the demonic world. They are writing handwritings that are contrary to the will of God, Colossians chapter 2, that are contrary to the will of God concerning your life, concerning your season today, concerning this very hour when you are hungry. They have written stuff that they want to fulfill. This is why they can assign demons. They assign certain kind of demons to distract you because there's things that they want to fulfill that they've written concerning you. But you have power, you have victory through the blood of the Lamb. The Bible tells us that the blood has wiped out every handwriting that is contrary to the will of God. That means there's handwriting that is contrary to the will of God, but the blood has wiped it all away. But you must set your mind your mind, because that's the battlefield. Your mind. Set your mind on the things that are above. Don't focus so much on what is happening here. Set your mind on things that are above, because above, that's where there's wisdom that is higher than logic. Wisdom that is higher than sensuality. Wisdom that is higher than science. Wisdom that is higher than spells and magic. Child of God, set your mind on things that are above. So the enemy comes again. He takes him up on an exceedingly high mountain, shows him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, riches, wealth, honor, respect. And he said to him, all these things I will give you. This is where many fall. I will give you. You see, before things are presented to you and I, before you walk into a place of relevance, Sometimes you have already fought the, the battle before. What is happening here is the Lord Jesus Christ has now fought the battle concerning his ministry. This is why the enemy can no longer speak to him about it. He has already fought that battle and he has won that, bio, that battle. So, and as you know that the ministry of the Lord began to grow and increase and he was very popular because of the signs, the miracles, the wonders, and of course he's the word of God. But now as he's becoming popular, there's certain glory that comes when you become popular. There's certain wealth that comes when you become popular. There's certain favor that comes as you grow in your gift, as you grow in your talent, as you grow in your marriage, as you grow in health, the health that the Lord is granting you right now. Some of you, the Lord is granting you good health even now as you're listening to this word. He's granting you good, good health, good health, even your mindset. He's clearing your mindset. There's certain things, there's certain things that are happening in your mind and he's clearing fogs out of your mind even right now. He's healing your mind even right now. But as you grow and as your mind begins to work according to the capacity that it needs to work in, remember, the enemy will come and he will say, I will give you, I'll give you even more. I, I, I have more than this. Uh, I can make you drive uh, cars that are better than that. You, you can live in a bigger house than this if you do it this way. You can drive a jet. Why, why are you even driving a Bentley? I can offer you a private jet. If you would just change your message that you preach in church. I can give you this if you just show a little bit of skin on Instagram. Because, you know, you're always covered up. But you see, some people on Instagram, when they show a little bit of skin, their followers begin to grow. That's compromise. You see, compromise is not a huge thing. It's a little thought. 
Why don't you just stop speaking so much about the Bible on Instagram, on Facebook? Maybe your followers will grow a little bit faster. Why don't you just change the way that you preach? Why don't you just invite somebody who's a little bit circular, somebody who doesn't really speak so much about Jesus, somebody who doesn't mention the name of Jesus all the time. Change this. Do it that way. Shift a little bit like this. You know, you know this is 2020. We're going to 2021. Why don't you just become a little bit lukewarm? I can give you the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I can give you cars and houses. I can give you a bigger ministry. I can give you children. If you just go there, if you just call Dr. So-and-so who happens to be a witch and a wizard, if you just keep that salt, if you just pour that salt every day in your kitchen, if you just burn this and that in your house on the doors, then I will give you a child. Be very careful. Be very vigilant. The Bible tells us that be content. Be content with what you have. Be content with what you have today. Let patience finish its work inside of you, that you may be perfect and complete for the glory that is to come. Let patience have its work because yes, you are destined to be a business person. You are destined to have businesses all over the place, but be patient. As you are being patient, compromise will come. I'm reminded of the Bible in the book of Genesis when Eve was about to enter into motherhood. Eve was just a wife. She had not yet had children, but we see the tempter coming in a season before another season. We see the tempter saying, did God really say, did God really say you shouldn't eat of the tree that is in the midst of the garden? You see, Eve hadn't become a mother, but when she became a mother, she was no longer in the place of glory, in the place of power because she traded her identity for the glory that the enemy was presenting to her. She traded her identity for the riches of the world. I'm reminded of Esau just before his father is about to die and pronounce a blessing over his life. Jacob is standing right there ready to tempt him, to trade in his identity, to trade in his name and his birthright. And so he trades his birthright because he's so hungry. And he said, what good is this birthright to me? I'm hungry right now and I will die if I don't eat. I will die if I don't worship you. I will die if I don't go before my feet. I'm willing to go to the witches and the wizards. I'm willing to do this. Do not trade in the things that God is giving you, is about to give you. Remember, at the crossroad of your promotion, like Eve, at the crossroad of your promotion, like Esau, he's about to receive a blessing for his father. But something happens. At the crossroad, Saul was about to have the kingdom, everlasting kingdom, but his disobedience cost him everything. Child of God, at the crossroad of victory, the tempter will come when you're weak. At the crossroad of your destiny, at the crossroad of promotion, at the crossroad of favor and open doors, I tell you that that tempter will come and will present to you something that is even less. God wants to give you 10 million pounds, but the enemy comes and he says, I'll give you 100,000. You've never seen 100,000 in your bank account. All you've seen in your bank account, the most you have seen is 10,000. And the enemy says, I'll bring you, I'll give you 100,000, but the father has 10 million for you. Do not trade your destiny. Do not trade the good and perfect gifts that the Father has given you. Do not trade your plans. Do not trade his promises, child of God. And he says, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world and their glory. All these things I will give you, but there's a condition. There's a condition. There's always conditions with Satan. But the God that we worship who is love, he doesn't have any conditions. Because what he gives, he gives freely. But this one, this adversary, there's always conditions of compromise. Do not compromise. He said, I will give you this. If you fall down and you worship me, the Lord Jesus says, away with you, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him. Today, I'm here to tell you to not compromise. You are so close. Do not compromise your destiny. Yes, that looks good, but the Father is greater. Do not compromise. If you feel in your heart, do not ignore that. There's something in your heart that's just telling you, this is not good enough. I deserve more in this relationship. This, 
is not good enough. I deserve more in my business. I deserve more for the ideas that I have, for my talent and my gift. This thing that they're presenting to me, it comes with too much compromise. It's a good job, but it takes away my peace and the time that I have with the Father. I will just remain faithful to him. I'm sure he will give me another job that pays even more. Yes, we are in a pandemic. Your bank account is running dry and the enemy has come to present to you something that comes with compromise with your spirit. You see, the compromise, it's always to do with your spirit. It's always to do with your soul. It's a fight for your soul. It's a fight for your prayer life. It's a fight for your relationship with the Father. Look at these things they are presenting to you. Do they fight your identity? Do they fight your relationship with God? It could be that that thing is not coming from the Father. It could be that that idea, those things, those people, that relationship, those ways of doing things, they are not from the Father. It's not the good will of the Father. It's not the perfect will of the Father. It is not, certainly not, the acceptable will of God. So today we want to pray. I want to pray for you today. You're at a crossroad. You're about to enter a place of extreme favor and promotion. But the enemy has also come with a bowl of lentil soup. A bowl that only feeds you for a season and a time. Then you run dry. But because you change course, it's hard to go back. Some of you have already changed course. And I want to pray for you that God restores you today. He's able. If you're willing to repent, he's able. Oh my God. Maybe you're already in a cult today. If you just repent. If you just ask for forgiveness. It's simple with the Father. If you just plead his blood, receive his blood once more. And he takes away every handwriting of the cult, every fear. They're telling you, you can't leave this cult. You can't leave us. You can't leave this gang. You can't leave this group. You can by the power of the Holy Spirit today. You will leave if you believe. Let us pray. Father, I give you honor. I give you the glory. Oh God, nothing is impossible for you. Father, all things are possible with you, O oh God. And this is why, O oh God, we come boldly before thy throne, O oh God. You are the God in whom nothing is hidden, nothing is impossible. Nothing is too hard, O oh God. In you, with you, we present our lives before you, Father. With our hearts, we bow down before you. And Lord, we say we submit everything that we are, everything that we have, our families, Oh God, your people, they submit their ideas in your hands. Once more, those that ate bowls of lentil soup and changed their destinies, oh God, for a thing that was temporary, today they present themselves once more before your throne in repentance. They bow before you in their hearts, oh God. Father, have mercy on us today. Father, those that are about to cross the road, oh God, into the path that you have not assigned, O oh God, by your delivering spirit. Deliver them, Holy Spirit, today. Change their minds today, supernaturally. Open their eyes to see and to be quick, quick to make a decision right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Father, even as our Lord Jesus Christ was able to speak and to present your sword of truth, he won every battle, O oh God. After those 40 days and 40 nights, he won every battle. Today, O oh God, we know that by the blood we have won every battle. But there are battles of the mind, O oh God. And I pray for your people today. By your supernatural power, give them the victory. Give them the tools, the concepts, the ideas, the train of thoughts that they need. O oh God, write them in their minds and their hearts. Father, by the power of your spirit, Put these new codes, oh God. Father, even as they sleep, your word, it is alive. Your word is the code, oh God. Let it become alive and active that it cannot be ignored anymore, Father. Let it become so loud, louder than the distractions and the voices of fear. Father, those that are scared to walk into the path that you have assigned for them because it looks so different, because there are no footprints in there. But you've called them to make the first footprints. Oh God, many you have called to make the first footprints. God, give them the boldness. Boldness like never before. Father, I pray.
the boldness as of 10 men and women. Oh God, give them, oh God, to your child today. Oh God, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit. Oh God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Oh Lord, thank you for grace to walk and to finish. Grace to cross the crossroad. Grace to overcome the tempter and the devourer. Grace to overcome, oh God, temptations. Grace to overcome compromise. Grace to be content and to be patient. Grace to finish the race well, to finish the race good. Father, we thank you for that grace. I thank you for your people today. Bless them today, oh God. Father, bless them. Bless them, oh God, bless them. From the soles, oh God, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, let your blessing overflow in the lives of your child. Today, Father, I pray, let it overflow, oh God, to those around them. Let it overflow on every side. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Let these be like fountains of water that come, that many can come and drink because of your blessing and your grace. This we pray in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And God loves you so much. God loves you so much. Keep going to him. Keep telling him everything. Tell him everything. He loves you so much. And I'll see you on Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.